on the Pigeon River Farm, doing farming right. I'm Robert Brown, the owner of Pigeon River Farm. Thank you for viewing. In this episode, we're going to talk about the effects of feeding poultry soy products. Uh, soy has been with us for a lot of years. Actually, I believe its original origin is in Japan from thousands of years ago. An incredibly healthy product that we can consume, but what we're learning now is we're over consuming it. Uh, there's way too much soy in our diet. I have read statistics that said we could have up to 50 times more soy in our diet than we should. Where this leads to a problem is soy itself actually is an estrogen carrier. So we're exposing our young children to a high level of estrogen. So that brings me to the discussion here of poultry. Uh, one of the key ingredients in poultry feed is soy. And soy is uh, used as the protein source for virtually all poultry feed that is commercially available, both for egg layers and meat producing birds. So what we've done is recognize the concern with soy and the overabundance of it. And we have changed our feeding methodology and for a long time we've done this. And we have a soy-free diet. Uh, soy-free diets are, are complicated by nature. They're, uh, we've got to find a good alternative for soy. And soy being a mainstay, commercially available item, both in conventional and organic world. So the alternate options are somewhat limited. To do this on a scale for good production of eggs to make the farm economically viable. That's one of the challenges with farming. Uh, you can hobby farm, but that doesn't pay all of the costs involved with maintaining a farm operation. So what we've done is we've partnered up with some great organizations and one of them is we get our, we get our protein source organic sunflower meal. A local supplier that extracts the oil from the sunflowers and then we get the sunflower meal. It's uh, organic certified, uh, great product. I've been to their facility, they do a great job. And so that is our primary source. The secondary source is field peas. Uh, you might know them as garden peas. The very peas that you have in your garden, we take them and we need them in a dry form. So they'd be a mature, just like when you plant uh, the seeds, that's what we need. And that carries along a lot of the items, again, comparable to, to soy, but without any of the health effects that you'd often have with soy. So again, we've uh, found an excellent source from uh, in central Wisconsin here to purchase the field peas. So that's another ingredient in our feed. And then additionally, we actually use fish meal as part of the, the feed source to maintain the protein level. So between the sunflower meal, the field peas, and the fish meal, uh, we're able to achieve the protein and nutritional value that we need. We also use corn, locally produced, certified non-GMO corn that comes from very fertile ground. Uh, and that's one of the key ingredients. We gotta make sure we get the micronutrients to the bird. We ultimately get it in the egg and to our customers. Uh, we additionally uh, use uh, oats, lo again, locally produced, non-GMO, uh, not sprayed with glyphosate. Now, most people are unaware that termination of most small, small grains now is being done with the application of glyphosate and that glyphosate being applied basically roundup so they spray the oat plant or the wheat plant or rye with glyphosate right prior to combining very serious situation so additionally we we make a strong effort to make sure that uh, we source correctly and of course none of the farmers that we would contract with and even consider that since we are using organic or transition organic product. Uh, additionally, we actually use alfalfa and that alfalfa is actually a very high grade alfalfa that is 
uh, put in. We put 40 pounds per ton of extremely high grade alfalfa. And that is actually put into the mixer along with everything else. Then the most exciting part here is our mineral pack. Uh, we actually have a world-class nutritionist, Mike Waters, that uh, works for the farm. And what he does is actually custom produces the minerals that we put into the feed based on our soil type. So what the plants are exposed to in this area, in our region here, we again allow us to take and put in uh, the minerals to supplement what we're lacking in. Okay, the minerals that we, the minerals and vitamins that we put into the feed uh, are customized to our farm. They are not commercially available off the shelf. They are customized to the soil type that farms that produce the feed uh, have on their what are they're lacking I should rephrase that things that are lacking on the farms that we buy or feed from uh, they uh, we in turn will supplement it with things like iodine selenium in the upper Midwest where we're located selenium is in, in uh, limited supply in the soil naturally occurring we've mined most of the iodine out of the soil so things of that nature we put in. And then we also put in 40 pounds per ton of the highest grade alfalfa that I can source. Uh, that is gonna, again, can bring along some of the lutein that we're looking for. Uh, plus in the high tunnel, we actually raise greens throughout the winter time. So the birds are exposed to that. So they're getting a natural green, they're getting the, the feed source. So there's a little more science to, to feed than just uh, what's readily available. There's some absolutely excellent feed producers out there. So if you're buying feed for your backyard flock, uh, just make sure you go with a very reputable source, preferably an organic source would be the best, my recommendation, uh, and then go with the soy free. Uh, again, to, for the very reason is we need to keep the birds soy consumption to keep that estrogen level very low it's in that it does not occur to any degree in nature but if you force it it does occur we also uh, with our our feed sort we use the redmond products a lot of you might be familiar with redmond salts uh, they also have a mineral pack and the salts are included with our with our mix and then we use a sustainable source of oyster shells for to produce the calcium that are needed for the eggs. So there's a whole entire science that's behind doing farming right. We, birds of course are on pasture and we adjust the feed based on winter and or summer. On summer, uh, the birds are able to get a fair amount of their nutrients off, especially the protein source. Uh, so we start looking at the feed value of what they're eating. So when they're out on pasture during the summertime, we look at the feed value, uh, and very similar we do with our cattle. Uh, there is a protein source that be occurring in the clovers, uh, the, the plantain, the alfalfas, the dandelions. All these are going to have a certain protein level and we will have, adjust accordingly with our feed. During the winter time, of course, it's quite different. We have a limited access to, to the greens, so we go ahead and it's adjusted into the into the feed that we produce. Also, we gotta remember that in most confined, or in, in the case of confined operations, there is no or very little access to natural sunlight. We need vitamin D. The bird needs vitamin D to give you any vitamin D in the eggs. So we winter the birds over in two large high tunnels, or often known as greenhouses, and within these high tunnels, the birds are able to freely move around, scratch, dust themselves, and then we have, these are nutrient-rich environments to start with, and then of course the birds are aiming every year into making them more nutrient-rich. So our the vegetables that we grow during the summertime benefit from the birds, so it's a symbiotic relationship. That symbiotic relationship is something we've taken many years in developing. 
So during the winter time and in, in the coldest times in the upper Midwest here, we've seen temperatures of in excess of 20 below zero Fahrenheit. And the birds are in there still scratching and active. And we've seen days like that where if it's sunny, we often will get 50 to 60 degrees Fahrenheit and the birds uh, can take advantage of it. Our objective of doing farming right is to produce the highest quality eggs to our consumer. We wanna do is really make you healthier. And by doing this right, that's the goal. Uh, food should also be considered a health product, a, a medicine, if you allow me. We need to look at things that way. Right now, we, we so often treat food as one item and pharmaceuticals as another and never the two will, will actually meet. Well, we don't believe in the pharmaceuticals. Our birds get no access to pharmaceuticals because there's no need to. But in turn, we wanna pass that nutrient on and all of these things that are lacking, uh, specifically the micronutrients. I have been such a believer in micronutrients. And the more I learn, the more I realize I need to learn more and we have perfected this. But with that quality that we put into our feed, into our pastures, within our pasture environment, we actually both use a, a liquid, mostly microbiology based. So we're actually putting microbes into the pasture. Uh, so we're using a zone products is the is the vendor that we've chosen after a lot of research and they have the perfect biologicals so we actually apply sprays to put biologicals onto the field for both the poultry and the ruminant or cattle uh, grazing uh, additionally uh, we use dry materials uh, we are using uh, the Redmond products for getting it all in these micronutrients onto the pasture. So our goal ultimately at Pigeon River Farm is to produce the highest quality nutrient rich egg. Our golden rich eggs uh, should make a difference in our customers' lives. Thank you and have a great evening.